The idealized op amp has no frequency dependent elements, and its behavior is not affected by the frequency of the input signal. That is to say, it has infinite bandwidth. This works for low gain, low frequency systems. However, most op amps have a frequency response that looks like that of a low pass filter with a low cutoff frequency. This does not mean, however, that the bandwidth of an op amp based circuit must be narrow. This plot shows a typical frequency response for a general purpose op amp as an individual component. At very low frequencies, the op amp applies the maximum open loop gain, which we'll call ADC to distinguish it from the gain at higher frequencies. As frequency increases, gain decreases, with a prominent transition from stable gain to decreasing gain occurring at the corner frequency, which in this case is 10 Hz. Eventually the slope stabilizes, and the gain decreases by 20 dB for every factor of 10 increase in input frequency. Designers intentionally create this type of frequency response because it makes the op amp less likely to oscillate when used in a negative feedback configuration. This technique is called frequency compensation, and op amps designed this way are called internally compensated op amps. Because the op amp's gain is a value that varies according to frequency, we write it as A as a function of JF, instead of simply A. The frequency at which the op amp's gain reaches 0 dB is called the unity gain frequency. This is where the op amp stops functioning as an amplifier, and it also gives us a convenient way to calculate the op amp's open loop gain at a given frequency. For frequencies significantly higher than the corner frequency, the gain is approximately equal to the unity gain frequency divided by the frequency of interest. An op amp starts to lose gain at a low frequency, but because its initial gain is so high, it can still function as an effective amplifier at higher frequencies. In fact, by using the op amp in a negative feedback configuration, we can trade gain for bandwidth. For example, if we implement a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 2 volts per volt, the corner frequency of the closed loop gain will be much higher than the corner frequency of the open loop gain. Here the curve representing closed loop gain stays approximately flat until it approaches the curve representing open loop gain. If we increase the closed loop gain to 10 volts per volt, the curve representing closed loop gain will approach the curve representing open loop gain at a lower frequency. In other words, the closed loop bandwidth will be narrower. That's how the trade-off works. The overall circuit can have less gain and more bandwidth, or more gain and less bandwidth. For more details, check out the link in the description or visit allaboutcircuits.com.